Sorting out fact from fiction is the great challenge for anyone interested in searching for the lost Dutchman's mind. There was a Jacob Waltz, the Dutchman. Waltz was born in Germany around 1810, and immigrated to America in 1839. Waltz arrived in New York City, but quickly made his way to goldfields in North Carolina and Georgia. Waltz did not strike it rich in either North Carolina or Georgia, but he learned a valuable lesson, that he had to be a citizen of the United States in order to stake a claim. Waltz filed a letter of intent to become a citizen on November 12, 1848. Gold was discovered in the newly annexed territory of California in 1849. The California fields eclipsed the gold fields of the East, and Waltz, like every other prospector, headed west. Waltz worked as a miner in California for 11 years. On July 19, 1861, in the Los Angeles County Courthouse, Jacob Waltz became a naturalized citizen of the United States. Waltz left California in 1863, with a group of prospectors bound for the Bradshaw Mountains of the Arizona Territory. Waltz's name appears on a mining claim filed in Prescott, Arizona Territory, on September 21, 1863. Waltz moved to the Salt River Valley, an area near Phoenix and the Superstition Mountains, in 1868. It was now that Waltz began his trips into the mountains surrounding the Salt River Valley. Did Waltz discover a rich gold mine or cash on one of these prospecting trips? Witnesses who knew Waltz, say Waltz prospected every winter between 1868-1886. Waltz died in Phoenix, Arizona Territory, on October 25, 1891, in the home of Julia Thomas. Waltz gave Julia Thomas clues to the location of a mine on his deathbed. Waltz is buried in the Pioneer Cemetery, in downtown Phoenix. Jacob Waltz, the Dutchman, was dead. But the clues he left as to the location of his mine remained alive in the dreams of Julia Thomas. Julia had looked after Waltz before he died, and was the first of a long line of hunters for the lost Dutchman's mine. Julia sold all of her worldly possessions to finance a fruitless search for the mine. Many historians believe that Julia Thomas gave an interview to Pierpont C. Bicknell, a freelance newspaper writer and prospector, shortly after her return from the Superstition Mountains in September of 1892. It is with the coming of Pierpont C. Bicknell that things become murky. Prior to Bicknell's arrival, there was little public mention of the lost Dutchman's mine. On November 17, 1894, an article by Pierpont C. Bicknell describing a lost gold mine offering unlimited riches was published in the Phoenix Saturday Review. Bicknell wrote during the age of yellow journalism, when newspapers reveled in stories based on sensationalism and crude exaggeration. Bicknell did not disappoint. Bicknell whetted the appetite of the would-be treasure hunters and made the search seem relatively simple. He wrote, The district designated is not extensive. It lies within an imaginary circle whose diameter is not more than five miles and whose center is marked by the weaver's needle a prominent and fantastic volcanic pinnacle that rises to a height of 2,500 feet. The legend of the lost Dutchman's mine might have withered into insignificance had it not been for the mysterious death of Adolf Ruth, an amateur treasure hunter, in the summer of 1931. The same year, a group of folklore-loving boosters founded the Dons of Arizona to promote the colorful folklore of the state, including the legend of the lost Dutchman's mine. In 1945, Barry Storm published Thunder God's Gold, which was made into a major motion picture Lust for Gold in 1948, starring Glenn Ford as Jacob Waltz. In 1949, the Peralta Stones were unearthed, giving a further boost to the legend. In 1964, Life magazine did a spread on the Peralta Stones, giving yet further credence to the legend. Whether true or not, the Lost Dutchman's Mine is the most famous treasure legend in American history. The Lost Dutchman's story has been written about at least six times more often than the story of Captain Kidd's famous lost treasure. According to one estimate, 8,000 people annually make some effort, however half-hearted, to locate the Lost Dutchman's mine.